What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? Okay, so um, yeah, as you can see, what <laughs> I went on ahead and I just said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and finish this show. Um, I already knew what it was about and everything, but I went on ahead and finished it. Like I was at work and because my boss wasn't there, my boss wasn't there, so um, I was able to sit there and just watch the whole thing. Okay, I mean the whole freaking thing. And when I tell you, I honestly feel for all of the people who were victims, the families of these victims that had to relive this whole thing. Because, I mean, it's one of the number one uh, series that's on Netflix right about now, probably, um, because it's been so much talk about it. But I hate when stuff is so traumatizing or re-traumatizing to people because we know that it's based off real people. And I know they're trying to get the story out, but in a way, who acts? Because we had so many documentaries about Jeffrey Dahmer and everything. Um, did we really need this series? This series being reenacted and everything? No, we did not. But, you know, Ryan Murphy, I will say Ryan Murphy, he did a good job at um, the casting. He did a good job at the actors. Um the actors did a good job, I should say, themselves. Niecy Nash, give her her Emmy right about now. Um, don't even put nobody else in the category with her. Just go ahead and give it to her. Um, give Evan Peters his Emmy, too. Because when I... <sighs> Evan Peters scares me sometimes, okay? Because the way that he gets into his characters, oh, my goodness. Like, he becomes them. He becomes them. And I'm like, is this acting or is this real? Now, if something pop up in real life and you got something to do with it, I'm going to be like, well, bitch, the signs was there. Okay? The signs were there because you playing this a little bit too well. Um, When I tell you he father made me uh, hate Jeffrey Dahmer, I, when all of this stuff was happening, I think, okay, it was in 91. So, that means I was four years old. My sister was just born. Okay? I was four years old. My sister was just born. So, I didn't know nothing about it. I learned about Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, um, later on in life, as a lot of us have. Um, I feel like a lot more people have taken an interest in, you know, a lot of these crime documentaries and stuff because it's been an uptick. It's been an uptick. You know, true crime and all of that, the podcast, the TV series, the docu-series, all of that has been, you know, getting a lot of play for the past, like, five years or so. Like, getting a lot, a lot of play, you know? They've been there, but it's just been an uptick in the past few years, you know? And so, um, <clears throat> I don't know what possessed them to actually do this show. Uh, I would like to know Ryan Murphy's style pattern. Or, ooh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. What made him say, listen, hey, let's do a screenplay about Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, I just want to know what went into it, okay? But <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just know I had to come home and get these little thoughts out because I just needed to get that out so I can cleanse it out my system. Because after the day, I just don't want to hear nothing else about Jeffrey Dahmer. Because at this point, I feel like... I don't know if it's humanizing him. Like, when I looked at the show, it was 10 episodes. Baby, them episodes was long, okay? I said, well, hold on. Why am I still on the same episode? Bitch, why does it say I still got 15 minutes and it felt like I've been watching this shit for an hour and 30? <laughs> what is going on? But I was enthralled. I was enthralled. I, I'm not going to lie. As when I finally allowed myself to get into the show... It was, it was okay. It was, it wasn't a bad show. And I hate the fact that I can't get on here and say, oh, the shit was terrible because it was not terrible. It's one of the better series that I've seen on Netflix in a minute, you know? And when I tell you, it, it, it kept my attention when I fully started to actually give my attention to it. Um, if you don't know the story of, of, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, he was the serial killer out there in Milwaukee. He was staying in a poor neighborhood and a poor black neighborhood at that. And um, the one thing that I will say that I'm so glad, Michael Beach, he played one of the black detectives that was interrogating him, right? And so at one point when they was talking, 
he asked him, why was he staying at the place that he was staying? And he was like, because I was poor. I ain't had no money or whatever. That's all I could afford. And he was like, no, that ain't it. You were staying there because you think that that was a, a, a poor black neighborhood that was not patrolled a lot, that the cops didn't really give a damn about, that, you know, you had a lot of poverty stricken people there and you wanted to take advantage of them and they were black and you know that the black the, 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 the cops don't give a fuck about the black peoples and all that shit now when he was seeing all of that the white detective that was sitting next to him you notice that he didn't say um yeah 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 no he said he tried to continue as to so why you do this he literally switched the subject back to what was being said to something else I said, oh, okay. So, you know, he knew what he was saying was pissed off and that he was, um, the black detective was being pissed off or whatever because he was saying true. And so he didn't want to acknowledge that truth because from what they was showing us on this show was basically how we already think that a lot of these police stations are. They're very racist towards minority, especially black people, you know, and to know that most of those cops got rewarded to see that. At the end, you know, the two cops that came over, because in episode two, okay, if we want to go by episode, episode, I don't know how much time or battery I got on this, but let's see what I can get out. The first episode starts off, he's going to a club out there in Milwaukee, and you know, he's in there talking to these two guys that he had already hit on, and he had forgot that he hit on them, because they was like, you don't even remember that you tried to take me home already. And then it was this other guy who, you know, he started flirting with Tracy, and he wound up going home with him. Mind you, they had a character named Miss Glenda, who was supposed to be his neighbor, who was like, hearing things very much clearly through the vent in the apartment now from what people were saying um miss glinda she really didn't live in the apartment next door to him she lived in a building next door okay in the area and she had a lot of suspicion about stuff that was going on it was just a lot of suspicious activities that was going on but um i feel like they put if that is true they put that in there for exaggeration you know how when they make a show about a true situation, they have to exaggerate some events or add certain things just to zhuzh it up or whatever, you know, to keep the, uh, the, 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 the viewer's attention. So that's what they did. So we're going to just go about what they put out there, you know? Um, and so she keep on calling the cops about these noises, about these, you know, hearing people. And that's throughout the series, you hear the men in there screaming. And if you had your subtitles on, they will literally be like man four screaming and doing all this man six man 11 man 12 man 17 you know shit like that and i was just like wow that's crazy okay he had 17 victims that we know of that we know of okay because to be honest who's to say that there wasn't really more all right you know he had one tracy almost was one tracy was able to swiggle his ass up out of there now see tracy had me messed up and i'm just gonna be 100 percent honest because miss glenda said that the shit stank up in that hallway it smelled like something was just fucked up up in that hallway okay it, it, it like like it was just a lot it was just a lot coming from jeffrey's goddamn apartment and she kept on saying that to him something is going on in there and the smell is permeating to my house uh and i'm pretty sure hold on I'm pretty sure everybody else can smell that shit too. So you need to do something about it, boo-boo. Okay? Baby, Tracy brought his ass up in there and he smelled the smell. I'm like, boy, I know you smelt it in the hallway. I would have turned my ass right back around. And let's say I actually did go up into the apartment, which no. Okay? Um, you giving me a cup with something with bubbles on top and then I'm looking at yours and yours ain't got no bubbles and you going to tell me it's dishwashing liquid. Just go on here and drink it. No, 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 no. Okay, you got like 15,000 locks on your door. I mean, I know we in a bad neighborhood, but no, 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 we ain't finna do this. And so he drugs him, but not to the fact where Tracy wasn't able to get away and then to flag down the cop because he was running down the street half naked, telling him that the, and then the whole thing was, are you high? Are you this and are you that? It was just the representation of how the police really and race came into play. Because if you look at the series and you see the people who actually sat down and talked to the police officers and was telling them what was going on, especially the men, instead of questioning what the person looked like that you're talking about, they're asking them, 
well, you know, you've been arrested, or you're a gang member, you do drugs and all that stuff, because they automatically associate black people with crime, with negativity, with all of these bad things, gangs, drugs, arrest, and all this shit. And it was just really pissing me off, okay? Dude got, you know, I, what episode was it that Ricky from Pose was on there, and his car wouldn't start, and so he took him to his grandma's house, and grandma came down there and saved him from being killed, saved him from being a victim. OK, and then when he went to the police station to, uh, you know, say what was going on, that he was drugged and everything um, because he wound up overdosing in the field because they threw him on the bus and just let him go. You know, he was telling them and they basically didn't pay it that much of a mind. They didn't take him seriously, even though they went to the house and still didn't take him serious, you know, because he was a black man. And not just a black man, but a black gay man at that, okay? A gay man. One thing that they could... When... <sighs> in episode two, when we get his backstory, like, y'all should have known something was wrong with that little motherfucker when he brought the teacher to tadpoles. I said, tadpoles? Tadpoles? All right, all right, all right. See, this is where we going with this. Okay, and the daddy is teaching him taxidermy, okay, because it was a dead animal underneath the house and it was stinking or whatever. And so then he started getting roadkill off the floor, off the grounds and everywhere, and then teaching him how to do all that shit to it. I'm just sitting here like, what? Now, I understand that there are some people that do taxidermy by a trade or whatever. That's understandable, but you could just see he was just... You know, I was just like, uh-uh. So, y'all trying to tell us that the daddy set him up for this or whatever. Um, giving us a little backstory about how the mama had, like, little uh, postpartum depression. And they just didn't know it because mama was going through a lot when she was pregnant with him. Okay? And it was she was on a lot of, uh, you know, medication or whatever. And the daddy tried to blame her and the medications that she was on as the reason why he came out the way that he came out and did the things that he did. And what that that made me so mad at the end. I think it was like episode eight or whatever. That made me so mad when they was going to the trial and all that stuff. And he found out everything that was going on. And he was trying so hard to blame it on his wife, his ex-wife. Mind you, she wanted shit. She wanted shit even when they found out what was going on with her. And when she got her life together, she left that boy up in the house. Imagine you, he was still a senior in high school. He had not graduated yet. He left that boy up in the house by himself that whole damn time. And he and, 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 and the daddy wasn't there either because, you know, they had, had a divorce by then. So the daddy wasn't living there. And he couldn't get in contact with the daddy. And I'm sitting here like, so you've been up in this house for three months just doing whatever. And y'all ain't nobody checking in here on him. I said, daddy, you ain't even go to the graduation. And that's what got me because he was like, I see you uh was able to, you know, get, get through the graduation and stuff like that. I'm sitting here like, you didn't go? Baby, when <laughs> he just kept on trying to blame Everybody except for Jeffrey himself. Yeah, you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, the mama was fucked up, just got the other boy and left, you know. Um, understandable, I get it. She said, he said, she was like, you didn't ever include me in any of the things that you did with your dad. You didn't even ask. He said, but mom, I just never thought that you would be into it. She said, I wouldn't be, but shit, bitch, just ask me. I don't know why, but that shit made me funny, uh, made me laugh. The mama was funny to me. It's messed up, but the mama was funny. I know I shouldn't, but I was laughing when she said that shit. She said, you damn right. I don't want to do that nasty shit, but bitch, you could have fucking asked. Because that do be the truth. Give me the give me the option to say no, okay? Just 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 ask me, you know? And then I'll let you know. Include me, bitch. You know? Um, <laughs> we could have bonded and whatever together, too. But I was sitting there looking at the daddy, and then the daddy wound up saying, well, I had those same thoughts when I was younger, too. But it was about, you know, what it would be like like to, you know, uh, uh, build bombs, explosives and stuff like that. And he had brought an explosive to school and, you know, it was a girl in church that he was fancying and, you know, wanted to do things too. And, you know, thinking about what it would be like to murder. I was like, so it was you, bitch. <laughs> I said, oh my God, why you throwing blame? It was all y'all. It was all three of y'all, okay? That's who it was. Nobody was paying attention to him the way that he needed to be paying attention. This boy was going through so fucking much. Like, you go to the army. Like, no. You went home by yourself. You picking up hitchhikers 
First of all, this is back in the 70s when he had his first victim. You're picking up fucking hitchhikers. Y'all was too fucking... Oh, y'all was too fucking trusting back in the day. And I'm talking to somebody that was born in like 1960, 1970. Bitch, y'all was a little bit too trusting back in the day because y'all was hitchhiking like a motherfucker. He said, yo, my um friends got these tickets to go see so-and-so. And, um, you know, I, I decided that, you know, I was going to hitchhike there, catch a ride there. I said, no, bitch, if you ain't got no ride, we ain't going. Okay, you just going to let a stranger do that. And that's fine or whatever if you trust that. But then the motherfucker said, go to come to the house and let's lift weight first and get a little drunk um excuse me i don't know you so why am i coming to your house and doing what it's bad enough that i'm about to get in your car but then you want me to go into your actual house house no i'm already taking my life in my hands and now you want me to take my life in your my hand and yours that's just not a no-go that's a no-go boo he go up in there doing all that stuff and that motherfucker tried to kiss him and he said listen i'm not like that i said well you show sure enough act like it because you stupid what is going on Bitch, that motherfucker got pissed off at him because he called him the F word. I would have got pissed too. I like, don't do no stupid shit like that. He knocked him in the head with the weight and then he wound up killing him. And then he just, that's, and eh, 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 buried the body out there on the land. I said, what the fuck? Next thing you know, he out here going to gay bars and shit. You know, um, he got introduced to one dude, took him to a bathhouse. So baby, them bathhouses was infamous back in the day. They still got them. You know, that's where Jesse Smollett was there with them uh, Africans, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he used to go to bathhouses and shit like that and do whatever they do. That's just a fuck house, okay? I said, do women have stuff like that? Not that I want to Not that I want to go. I mean, because, you know, I'm too scared to do stuff like that. I... I I'm too clean, not clean, but you know, like, I'm a germaphobe. I just couldn't do no stuff like that. I have to have it in the comfort of my own place or your place or whatever. Like, mm mm. Knowing that other people are around doing shit. Or, oh, no, y'all too trusting. But this is the shit that they had to go through back in the day because, you know, it, it wasn't cool to be out the way that it is now. And I mean, even now, people still got problems with it, but we more accepting these days. You saw when in episode two when they took the little boy. And this is the part that I didn't understand is, and I have to go look this up. And if you have more information about it, the little boy Conrad that was 14 years old. And mind you, he had two 14-year-old victims. He had a 14-year-old, another 14-year-old, and a 17-year-old victim. Those were the youngest ones, okay? And this particular 14-year-old, he had already been in jail for, you know, sexually assaulting or raping or whatever his brother. Drugging him and doing all of that shit. And um, when they called him on that, instead of that scene pissed me off so bad. When I tell you these white people don't give a fuck about minority people, especially back then, that's all that I got out of this whole thing. I knew he was a killer. I knew he was fucked up or whatever. That's fine. I mean, it ain't fine, but that's just what it was. You know what I'm saying? But the way the attitude were of the cops and the judges, that judge gave that man a year in jail county basically and said that because you got a good job and you you know seem like you got a decent future i'm gonna let you go ahead and work but you got to come back to the jail what he let him out to go work but he go back to jail every night i said what the fuck type of shit is that and then when the father got up there to speak his piece the way he was so rude to him because he couldn't understand what he was saying even though i understood what he was saying even though his english was a little choppy you could understand what he was saying so the son had to come up there and translate and before he could even finish halfway through with this what he was saying and get to what he wanted to say for real for real about his son and coming to the america and all that shit he cut him off I said, you know what? And then for him to go to jail for that, for him to be on parole for being a sexual predator, and then to find this 14-year-old boy that just so happened to be his previous victim's brother, and then for the boy to tell him, yeah, my um, you 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 did some shit to my brother. And I'm sitting here like, why the fuck did you go with him? I don't want to fucking blame him because the way that they made it seem like he enticed him with some alcohol. And I'm just alcoholing a little bit of money. I said, so you would go with somebody who did something to your brother, got arrested and put in jail for it, and you're going to go with him? And I'm not blaming him, but I'm just saying, what was the thought pattern? Like, what was the circumstances around that that'll make him do some shit like that? And then when he get up in there, he drugging him. <clears throat> 
he wanted to make them in zombies and shit like that so he could just do whatever he wanted with them like the mannequin that he stole from the store oh my god when the grandma found that mannequin up in that i said oh grandma was just like what the fuck i said uh-uh Throw that shit out, Granny. And she said, I did. I did. I had to. And he got pissed. When he got pissed at Granny for throwing the mannequin out, and he was cussing her out and all that shit, and um, knocking shit over, I said, how the fuck dare you? And you, let me tell you something. After they did all of that shit, you cussing Granny out, and you gonna sit down and eat a TV dinner with Granny, and then apologize. I said, ma'am, kick his ass out. Now, see, the daddy ain't shit. Because the daddy was scared of his own son. He was, he, and he later said he felt uneasy around him. And so that's why he sent him to the grandma. So you felt uneasy around your son. So you gonna put your son, your, your mother in fucking danger? Because you don't know what he could have did to her. He could have killed her too. You know, people could, oh, he already snapped, bitch. I was just sitting here like, what? What? You talking to grandma like that? But anyway, the grandma, you know, I said, grandma was sitting down there eating TV dinners the whole time. I said, grandma, you don't cook? Y'all known to make a casserole or whatever. You ain't make no screen bean casserole? You just cooked up a TV dinner. You popped that thing up in the microwave and said, bitch, that's it. I would have been mad. Like, remember, I came over here to get food. I eat TV dinners at my house or whatever. I heat up shit at the house when I'm by myself. Bitch, I came here for you to cook. Okay, now cook real food. She said, no, ma'am, we're going to eat this um, Sarah Marie dinner. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I said, all right, all right. But when he got to that little 14-year-old boy, he came running out there, drugged up and everything. He had already drilled a hole in his head, put acid in his head. I just didn't understand how he was still alive from that. You know, I know ugh, ugh, the body is a crazy thing. And for them cops to come over and, and they're, they're, Glenda and her daughter is telling him, they're, them, he's a little boy. And if you look at him, for them to say, oh, he look like a man, he look like a man. If you look at his picture, you could tell that it was a child. You can clearly tell that it was a child. And you notice how when they talk about minorities, especially brown and black men, they prefer to the boys as men who are literally 12, 10, 13, 14, 15, or whatever. They prefer to them as men. But then when it's a, a white child or whatever, they're a child. We've seen those headlines. We've seen those headlines, okay? And that says a lot of things, too. Gave that boy back to him and then said, let me ha go see proof that you... Because uh, he said, that's my boyfriend. Because he was coming around the corner. He said, that's my boyfriend. He's 19 years old. No, he don't have no ID because he conveniently lost it. Um, We got into a fight. That's what happened to him or whatever. He drunk. And then he said, I got some pictures up there to show you that, you know, this my boyfriend. And they're going to go up in there. And when he, sh did y'all notice when, they sh when he showed him the pictures, both of the cops stepped back like that. And then going to say something, you know, uh, they got to go de-louse. Because they was up in the gay man's house. Mind you, this is 1991, though. And I know AIDS was out, you know, really out. But still, it's 1991. And for you to still having those goddamn notions, even if you're just making a joke about it, it was just really irritating. Um, <clears throat> and I just said, wow, he wound up killing that boy. And that shit, that shit just took me on. Mind you, that was just the second episode. That was just the second episode. I said, what? But the most disheartening one was, and the most sad one, and probably got to everybody besides the 14-year-old one, was episode six when they talked about Tony Hughes. Tony Hughes was deaf. Tony Hughes looked like one of the most kindest and sweetest persons. And all he wanted was to be loved. When he was doing that photography, that uh, photo shoot, and he was talking to that photographer, and the photographer basically just wanted to fuck him. And I wanted him to get away from him right there and there when he said, you are the finest piece of chocolate, dark chocolate I've ever seen. I just want to lick you. I said, what in the fetishization of black men are you talking about? And he said, now, is this because, like, does love live here? And I was like, um... Mm, he just wanted to be loved. He just wanted to be loved. I felt so bad for him when he found that boy up in the club. And when dude found out that he was deaf, he basically curved him. He left him alone. I said, shit. You know, and then his other friend wound up getting killed. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that was just so sad. His story was so fucking sad because he had dreams. He wanted to be a model. He wanted to do so much, 
And then he just, I, I just want to know how the other friend, the black guy that he was with, how did he feel? Because when they was in the club, he saw that Jeffrey was looking at him and he was urging him to go over there to talk to him, you know, and to know that he became his victim. You basically, and you want to know what it was when they start talking and he found out that he was deaf. I think that kind of changed something in him. But then when he told him, you got to earn me, I said, oh, now Tony was doing some things. I said, Tony, I would have fell for it too. I would have fell for you, Tony. When you said earn me, I would have been like, okay, challenge. Challenge accepted. I'm going to earn you. All right. And it seemed like it was cool for the minute, but I never trusted it. Never trusted it. And the one time he allowed that man to come inside him, he had to go to work afterwards. And he got upset because he was leaving. And that's what set him off. Child, my camera had cut off right when I was about to get into it. But no, he got upset because he had to leave. And he told him he was going to come back. And he was being like a love. You was doing too fucking much. And I said, what? And when he came back eventually, because he told him he was going to come back in the next week. He had to fucking work, dude. People got lives too. You know, and instead he had came back, but he left something. And Jeffrey thought that he was coming back for him and kind of found out that's not what he was coming back for. And he wound up killing him. Mind you, they said in real life what happened between Jeffrey and Tony. They were actually like, I don't know if they was actually boyfriend and boyfriend, but they had been talking to each other for a year. A little over a year before he actually killed him, you know. And his mother, Tony's mother, first of all, they said Tony became deaf because um, he had got pneumonia when he was born. Uh, and then they gave him some antibiotics as a baby for the pneumonia and the pneumonia had the side effects of taking his hearing. Um, so that's how he became deaf. His mother was played by, um, uh, Charmaine. If you ever looked at, um, A Different World, Charmaine from A Different World, Charmaine from The Cosby Show. Uh, she was on Malcolm and Eddie. She was on, I think she played Jazz Girlfriend on um, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Y'all know who she is, okay? And she did a really good job. Because at first I said, the girl that was Max's friends on um, Living Single who was gay. Okay, that Max didn't know was gay. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, that is Charmaine. Girl, she did a good job. She did a very good job. Ugh. The acting and everything, it did feel like I was there. Everybody was just doing what they needed to do. And I, I just, I felt so bad for that whole, everybody that was victims of this situation. What really, I and, and I keep on saying the part that really messed me up and the part that really made me mad. When in all honesty, everything about this made me mad and everything about this messed me up. That when they found out that Jeffrey was doing all the stuff that he was doing and the way Niecy Nash was acting when the cops finally came in and she was like, I told y'all, I told y'all this and y'all ain't never did nothing. Y'all said y'all was going to bring somebody in. I've been saying this for over a year and all this stuff and woo, woo, woo. Baby, I felt that shit. I felt that shit. And, and, and when they found out the victims and the way that you know, the father of the 14-year-old boy was being harassed. And then come to find out the harassing phone calls telling him to go back on the boat, go back home, and all this shit like that was coming from the police officers. Then they're getting upset because they had to get suspended with paid leave because they did not do their job protocol the way that they were supposed to with the 14-year-old boy. They didn't want to be around the whole situation because it was a gay thing. That's what it was, you know. And to them, this 14-year-old boy looked like a 19, 21-year-old man. Because he was a minority. And I was just like, wow, this is just ridiculous. And then when they got their job back, and not only did they get their jobs back, they got a fucking reward. And this is why a lot of people in minority communities do not trust police. And then you, it, it, it's so many incidents, it's so many situations throughout history why minorities, especially black people, have a hard time trusting and putting faith in the police because they don't care about us most of the time. 
Some of them. Not all. I have to distinguish that. But them little bad fruits be making it bad for all of y'all lasses. So y'all get lumped into that. And don't nobody want to call people out because we stand behind the blue. We stand behind the blue. All right. You out here going and, 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 and punishing people who are doing bad things, but yet you can't punish people within your own organization who is doing bad too without fearing for repercussions of what the people inside your organization is going to do. Why would you want to be a part of something like that? Oh, my God. The shit was just making me so mad. And, um... The way in the last episode, when they, okay, Jeffrey got like 15, 15, 15 life sentences. And it was one particular part that really, again, that pissed me off. When Jeffrey's mama, Joyce, went to one of the victims' uh, family house looking for, I think, uh, uh, his mother. And he got the grandma that came to the door, black lady. And the grandma was like, so why are you here? She was like, I just want you, I was wanting to talk to your daughter or talk to you and see if you guys can give a witness statement, can speak on behalf of Jeffrey at the trial, you know, his sentence trial. And I said, excuse me, me and the grandma was like, what? Now listen, sometimes we just got to open up. I know you're a mama and everything and you're going through some shit, but your son, your son just literally took their son out. And, oh, excuse me. You want them to say some words in order to get them to put him in a psychiatric hospital instead of jail? I said, you got to be out your, the, the white audacity, the white privilege of it all, okay? I said, that was some bold ass shit to come to that lady house to ask her to do some shit like that. And instead, what you got was Miss girl, she came up in there and she was pissed the fuck off. Everybody else was giving these calm little statements and saying what it is, how they felt and all this shit about their family. Y'all see the one that was like, and I love America. I said, boy, sit your ass down. No shave. Sit your ass down, okay? Um, And then mama just came through and she just said, don't fuck with me, Jeffrey. I said, oh, my God. Miss Lady was on Twitter. And she was one of the main ones who was saying how this is re-traumatizing. Um, and I understand. I understand. I don't want to see nothing from back then. I really don't. And the only thing that I'm about to look up is to see if Jeffrey Dahmer actually really talked the way um, Evan Peters had him talking. Because, <clears throat> first of all, nothing about his voice would have uh, made me want to be with him. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nothing about his voice would have made me want to be with him. It was like a, yo, so you know what's going on? What's up? I'm like, uh-uh, don't talk like that. Open up your mouth and stop dragging out your words, sir. But um, when he was in there trying to, let's go back when he was young and his parents were still together. That scene when he was in there trying to, um, you know, masturbate and he was trying to look at a plate like women, but it just wasn't happening. And he had just went fishing with his daddy and um, the daddy was showing him how to cut the fish and gut it and all that stuff. And then he let him do it. Um... <laughs> When he was playing with it, I said, oh, that's nasty. I don't want to touch that or whatever, but you got to do what you got to do. When um, mom and daddy was out there arguing or whatever, he comes down out there looking and they told him, take your ass back in there. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Okay, cool. So he go back up in the room and he can see that that got him off because he could not he could not come. He could not come when he was looking at the girls in the in the magazines or whatever, but he got aroused from them fighting and then thinking about the feel and the look of taking the insides out of that fish. He had Tony's head up in the window. Didn't he have his um head up in the freezer, in the refrigerator? When he, oh my God, when he went to that bathhouse, this is what I was going to tell you. He was a little bit inexperienced, right? Because prior to that, he got kicked out the army because he sexually assaulted um somebody there, uh, drugged them and all that stuff. He go stay with his grandma. Then he just started going out. The guy take him to the bathhouse. 
And he do what he do with him and all that stuff. Fine. So he introduced him to a whole new world that he didn't know was out there. Bath houses. So he started picking up dudes at the, um, you know, club, like white dudes and everything at the club, whoever it was. And he take them to the bath house and he's drugging them. And then, you know, he'll leave them there. It got to the point where one almost died and they had to call the cops just to get the paramedics just to get them back. And they had banned him from all the bath houses. So this made him have to go to the hotel. Now, I'm still trying to figure out how did he afford that hotel that he took old boy to. And I'm sitting here like, you are dousing people, dousing people who are willing to have sex with you. And then I realized it's not a sexual thing that he wants from them. It's like a control thing. It's like a... He want to see them in pain or useless or whatever it is. You know, that's just what it is. And um, when he finally did, he went in the bathroom and was making the drinks or whatever for the guy and fucked around and drunk the wrong one. So he dosed himself, right? <laughs> so he went back in there. He made another drink to give to old boy. And they both do what they had to do. Woke up the next morning and instantly I noticed that his hand was like, red or whatever and i said what the fuck is wrong with your hand baby when they panned up that man's body and you saw how his chest was caved in a little bit i said who beat the shit how did you beat his chest in like that and then you see his face i said oh my god and then took the body out in the um in the suitcase now i do believe that that was an accident that was an accident but bitch he said he kept that shit on the low for five, uh, nine years after that. And then it just sparked the fuck back up. I said, child, a fucking mess. This shit been going on since 1978. That was his first victim in 1978, I believe. All the way to 1991. Okay. And... <clears throat> You had that going on when he get into jail. The guy, Scarver, who actually wound up killing him, you know, he did the world a good service. He said the um, voices in his head and the guy was telling him to go ahead and take that nigga out. I mean, probably not. But, you know, he was a little psychotic anyway. Well, mentally unstable. You know, he had his little mental issues as well. And, and he was looking up information on his victims. <laughs> I said, What? Because he wanted to know some information on Jeffrey. And Jeffrey did not make himself a likable person in there already. I said the stuff that he was doing to agitate people so anybody would have had a reason to want to take his ass out. I was just like, that's so dumb. Like, why bring so much more attention to yourself? I mean, granted, you're going to be in there for the rest of the <laughs> end of time. So, I mean, you're going to need some people in there or whatever. I just... Uh, Oh, it was just a mess. When his daddy was trying to make a book out of this shit and thought that it was going to sell and it didn't. Girl, a fucking mess. A fucking mess. I said, why you... You didn't think that, they, that the victims was going to try to get the money? So what was be the reason why you want to make this book right off the bat? Right off the bat, baby. I don't want to read no shit like that. And you want to know what this also brings to light? It brings to light the fact that... Um... When it comes to like these serial killers or these events that happens that we think are very terrible, you know, these national events that happen that are very terrible, there is always a segment of people who are going to find this fascinating, entertaining, and want to be fans of, and they want to follow. And that's exactly what happened. So I was not surprised when we saw him getting fan letters in jail, people saying that he they want to be like him and they making comic books about him and everything or whatever. They're just that's what happens. They try to profit off of these big cases and these big names. They turn these killers into pseudo celebrities. Okay? And we see it happening. I mean, just just about every killer that has still a trial and went to jail or whatever, they they have a fan club. Most of them, okay? Um and that's exactly why you see what went down when this first came out with people on social media and everywhere else, men and women, basically saying, you know, he was fine and I would have did this and I would have let him do that. Okay? Like, you attracted to, I mean, yeah, he's a serial killer. Oh my God, he's a serial killer, but he's still fine. That don't mean that he can't be fine. Yeah, something wrong with you. I would not find that. Mm. 
I wouldn't say that shit out loud. If I did, I would not say that shit out loud because it just wouldn't sound right. Because it would sound like you fancying him and that's just not right. Um, And that says a lot about you. That out of all the things that you see that he done done, what you take away from it is that he fine. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But, uh, you know, he was up in jail. Of course, he got his in the last episode. But the way that they tied that shit into John, John Wayne Gacy. And when I seen that pop up, I said, bitch. Why didn't I put that together? Because yes, the same fucking thing. Um, the whole situation that happened with John Wayne Gacy, he started it first. He probably wasn't even the first who started it, but the killing boys or whatever because of the gay thing or whatever, because he was suppressing his gayness. Okay. Um, he started it first. And then John uh 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 Jeffrey Dahmer continued that shit. And then when they tried to use Ed Gaines as a defense, and if y'all don't know who Ed Gaines is, oh my God, look that shit up. It was crazy. Uh, he was killing women and, and, and taking their skin. Ed, went, Ed, Ed Gaines was the, um, I think he was the inspiration for the Silence of the Lamb, the one that was wearing people's skin and had the girl up in the pit with the dog and all that shit. Buffalo Bill, okay? Uh, yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. Um... And then he wanted to get saved. He get baptized the same day John Wayne Gacy get a uh, 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 lethal injection. I said, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I True. All in all, I will say, everybody did a good part. This... It was disturbing, and I, I, and I just, I'm just kind of upset at the fact that this series did not do to those involved in this case, the police officers or whatever who were rewarded, who was able to retire, and all this stuff for their misdeed and mishandling of this case. It did not do the same thing that it did to like Linda Fairstein. Um, when, when they see us came out with the Central Park Five, y'all know how we, this whole, that whole thing just turned her life upside down again. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just like, I feel like even though Jeffrey is gone, these victims really didn't get justice because the people that could have stopped it a long time ago, they're still, some of them or most of them are still here, still here and able to live their life peacefully. And I'm just like, that's just really, really messed up. Um, I would never watch this shit again. <laughs> I don't know who would do a double take and watch this again. Baby, a one-time watch was enough for me. Uh, when the mama tried to commit suicide after she got her son, after he got sent to jail, I said, child, what? <laughs> then you want to uh, take responsibility of how you was a bad mama and shit like that? <laughs> okay, girl. You know, um, I don't know what the takeaway from this was. I mean, we already knew. That, and when I say it like that, I mean, we know that there are some bad cops out there. We know that there is racism in the police force. We know that um, minorities are treated like trash most of the time, especially when it comes to the police force. Certain officers or whatever, not all of them, you know, you got to put that out there. Um... We know we, we we're not considered human. And if we die or something happens to us, oh, the fuck well. You know, we already know that. We're easy targets. And that's just basically what it showed. Like, we are easy targets. Easy targets. And it's unfortunate. Unfortunate. But you guys tell me how y'all felt about the show, uh, the series, and... um. I'm about to, I'm going to watch the uh, Tyler Perry movie tomorrow at work. Because, girl, I got to watch something else that's going to cheer me up. Because, baby, that shit on my mind, like, because you want to know what's really fucking with me? It's the fact that I found out at the very end when they put up all the pictures of the victims and they got the ages. I did not know that it was two 14-year-olds. Two 14-year-olds. Oh, y'all. I tell you. Y'all be safe out there. Don't be going out here picking up people. And don't be going back to people's houses, all right? I'll see y'all later. Be safe. Peace.